Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Quant Network aka q &T. So let's just dive in. And uh, before we jump on in into this video, I just want you guys to, to comment down below um, what you think the time frame is on regulations being ushered in and these utility gems being adopted because as we speak as we talk and as we focus on what's happening around crypto we know that these governments are extremely ready to adopt this technology but they just don't know how to provide uh, a certain regulation framework that will provide not only innovation to continue to thrive but it will also allow for them to have some sort of control over this market because at the end of the day that's what they want they want to have their hand in the pot around crypto but the problem is is that they just don't know how to do that without stifling innovation and i think right now we are starting to see this full-on approach around regulation and uh quant's actually talking about that or i should say gilbert verdian's actually talking about this from what quanta uh, posted and it's talking about by adopting a harmonized approach to regulation that provides certainty to institutions and investors alike europe is leading the way with mika says gilbert verdian and listen closely to this real quick Um, now we're looking at digital asset markets in the trillions, whereas before it was quite small. Um, regulators have had to react. Um, they've had time to understand the market and the protections that consumers need and businesses must follow to, to keep things safe. Um, I think they've caught up personally. Uh, we ha we've seen quite a lot of um, kind of light touch regulation where it's been guidelines you know, over the last 10 years, but I think now it's become law uh, in, in a few jurisdictions and other jurisdictions are, are still behind because they're trying to figure out which agencies should regulate what, mm -hmm. um, talking about the US specifically. Uh, what we're seeing in Europe is kind of like a harmonized approach to policy, which is the right way to do it. Um, the, the, the MICA um, regulation, which was only passed about two weeks ago, um, that, that's law now and, and that's coming in and, and that gives very, um, clear certainty to all the institutions and to consumers and investors and what they're doing in this space. Uh, that's the right way to do it. And, and I think Europe's taken that, that, that challenge head on and done something about it. And uh, I think it's the right market to, to see regulation flourish. JP Morgan's probably referring to US mm -hmm. regulation. Yeah. Um, I think the US will follow Europe eventually once they figure out jurisdiction. Um, but it's pretty much the same Globally, the, the, the rules um, around digital assets and, and what protections are needed on, on the buyer and the seller end um, are quite similar when, when, when you look at it. And of course, yeah, I do believe that the United States will follow uh, Europe and what Europe is doing around regulations. We did see the Mika bill uh, come into play. We talked about it. And then from there, we also seen uh, the UK, right? So we do see over here from Just a Tech Guy, it could be that community gateways are awaiting FCA regulation. And here we have UK finalizes plan for uh, regulation of Wild West crypto sector. And uh, we do see coincidence. And then here you guys have that uh, video that I just posted. Now, again, to me, when we look at regulations, it's going to be the spark that lights the flame that spreads rapidly around crypto adoption, specifically utility adoption, right? We know that the utility around a lot of these assets are extremely vital for the next evolution around major sectors like finance and payments, right? Now, one thing that I have noticed, especially going even back to November, uh, which I think that we, we talked about this slightly, I'm not too sure, but we do see watch Quant CEO and CPO on the future of institutional digital assets. Um, during this video, I, I, I'm pretty sure we played this video on, um, on, on the video, but it was more so talking about institutional grade adoption. And we do see we identified five key themes, interoperability, DLT, institutional digital assets, tokenized money, and central bank digital currencies. Those are the big focus points. And as we focus on these benefits that could come from this transformative area um, and this technology, you know, one thing is clear. They don't want to adopt this technology until there is a clear regulatory guideline in place. 
Now, I do believe that that is coming, and like I said, I think that this is going to set ablaze this entire market. I think that we will see money pour into this market like we have never seen before, because it's all going to be focused on the institutional grade sector. Remember, the next, you know, 100 million um, crypto users are going to come from the enterprise grade sector. Now, think about the next 10 trillion dollars, right? Do you think that that's going to come from the enterprise grade sector? No, it's going to be coming from the institutional grade sector. The amount of money that these institutions are holding that want to jump, you know, head first into crypto, it's in the trillions of dollars. This is a very very exciting area. And if we we are focused on regulation because, you know, it could go both ways. It, 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 like I said in the beginning of this video, they want to control crypto. They want to have um, their hand in the pot around crypto because they also see that this is an asset class that will be around for a very, very long time, reaching massive valuations upwards of 50 plus trillion dollars. In my opinion, I believe that it will be a hundred trillion dollar plus market and uh, they want a piece of that pie. Don't get me wrong. They, they they know the value behind these assets. Now, the interesting thing about Quant is that they have been preparing for regulations for a very long time. In fact, going all the way back to 2019. Yeah, that's right. 2019. We do see Gilbert Verdian posting this. Great meeting today at the Financial Conduct uh, Authority, FCA, discussing supervision, compliance, and how to support upcoming regulation. Quant is one step ahead of the entire market. You know who else was also preparing for regulation? Ripple. The big problem is that, you know, the SEC was like, nope, we're going after them. We're XRP is the security. You know, Ripple is selling unregistered securities, blah, blah, blah. We know what happened with that. I do believe that also that will be a major catalyst. I think that Ripple is actually ahead of the curve as well. I think that XRP will have clarity. I believe that the case will be finalized soon. And uh, what will happen is a catalyst around regulations. And it's going to be very, very interesting. But QNT and, you know, what Quant has solved in my opinion, is bound for massive success. And one thing that I have also watched for is the expansion of their partnerships. Uh, Greg Lund27 posted this over on Twitter. Boom, UST Global just expanded their digitization efforts into Malaysia. Rapid global expansion by QNT partners has simply become the norm. Nothing else in crypto even comes close. And uh, here we have uh, UST. So UST is thrilled to announce a partnership with Intel and SAP, uh, uniting industry leaders in the hardware and software uh, sectors to accelerate the development of meaningful industry 4.0 solutions in northern Malaysia. And it's funny, right? Because I always look at like the industry 4.0 solutions. It's the fourth industrial revolution. This is going to be all digitized. This is all moving towards the digitization sector. And uh, here you guys have a few things broken down. So it's to digitize the industry 4.0 journey for Malaysian um, SMEs. Now it's centered on a few things. So obviously they want to jump into new solutions around the internet of things, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And it's already transforming how companies manufacture, improve, and distribute their products. Manufacturers are integrating new technologies including internet of things cloud computing and analytics ai and also machine learning into their production facilities and throughout their operations so this is already being fully adopted in and this is very exciting to me because it it's also going to be centered on cloud computing and things like that which we know will most likely have um you know quant behind uh, I think that this is very, very exciting. I think that as we see a lot of these partnerships that Quant does have in place uh, expand, it's also very beneficial for Q&T as well. Now, what I do want to talk to you guys about is XRP and Q&T. So, you know, Interledger Protocol, everyone believes that Interledger Protocol is going to kill Quant, that, you know, Quant can't even stand a chance against it. This is extremely wrong. Uh, shout out to just a tech guy. Uh, just a tech guy. Again, sorry. Quant gives clients the option to settle in any payment rail or digital asset in their multi DLT apps across any sector and any blockchain. As you can see, RippleNet is an option. And RippleNet has been an option for a very, very long time. This is very exciting, though, because as you see uh, DLT being fully adopted in, and as you do see a lot of these major institutional grade clients being very, very excited about interoperability, true interoperability, I mind you. Um, and as we focus on what Ripple is doing with RippleNet, they're positioning RippleNet to be 
a, a strong network for payments, very similar to Swift, which by the way, Swift has 11,000 plus financial institutions already tied to it, transacting in the trillions of dollars every single day um, with where they are positioning RippleNet and also XRP underneath the hood. I believe that DLT itself is going to be massively adopted and it's going to demand, and I say demand, um, quant technology. I think that this is extremely exciting, especially where we do see DLT be in position. And also we do see Interledger was not enough, so they invented blockchain gateways. And uh, here you guys can read a little bit about Interledger protocol um, and the API gateways. Um, I'm not going to read too much into this, as you guys are probably all aware of this. I've talked about it many, many times in the past, and you guys have uh, discussions around DLT networks and all that kind of stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, as we do focus on what XRP is doing, HBAR, all of these other major DLTs like Algorand, etc um at the end of the day we will most likely see a major network connecting all of these dlts uh powered by overledger and i think that overledger is going to be a very very exciting opportunity in this market if you are in this for the long term um in my opinion i do believe that the long term road ahead is going to be very exciting for a lot of these utility gems like qnc and even xrp and the funny thing about all of this is we do see over here from fintech circle uh quant network is working to create a digital payment network that will transform lives and markets enabling seamless cross-border transactions and expanding access to financial inclusion to millions of people now mind you right go back over to this read the fact that RippleNet is an option for a dlt app that could be utilized across any sector and any blockchain and this is a a direct connection to xrp and what is RippleNet centered for oh yeah that's right cross-border payments what is this doing it's creating a digital payment network that will transform lives and markets, enabling seamless cross-border transactions and expanding access to financial inclusion to millions of people. Are you understanding the big picture around this? Do you see what is happening with Quant and all of these major DLTs? This is the next major evolution of payments, of technology, of every single sector out there. I have said this time and time again on this channel. I don't care about, okay, what DLT is better than that DLT, blah, blah, blah. Like all of the major all-star DLTs in the space, which I've talked about them many times on this channel, XRP, HBAR, you know, Algorand, XLM, etc. Um, these are the ones that will be adopted in. These are the ones that will have, you know, a direct connection to Overledger and will be able to be utilized through Overledger. And with Quant wanting to power the next major financial institutions that want to jump into crypto and with them already being, you know, very close to the UK government and also uh, powering LAC chain, etc. Like, I don't see a future where DLT and this entire industry is the core portion of the global financial system. This is so exciting, and I want you all to understand how large of an opportunity that we have in front of us right now. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because I'm more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night. If you guys are on this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.